Uh, all right. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. In. <coughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> You're doing the games list? 2018. All the things are ready? Looking good? Yeah. Audio's on? Just trying to face the right off before we start. <laughs> All right. In three, two, one. Welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer and Cardboard Stacker Top 5 video. Yes. Today we're going to be doing a top 5 of... Our favorite 2018 game. That's right. And of course a couple exceptions to the rule with added expansion. So if the expansion came out in 2018, then I'm going to include the base game as well because I can do that because this is my well, show. I guess you would play the base game at the time the expansion exactly. came out too, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the way we do this, as always, is we're going to be taking our die and we're going to be rolling here. And then the player who gets the highest will choose who gets to go first and who gets to go second. Any other caveats to the list that you can think of? No, not really. I think I stick to with my own rules and my own good rules, and not unlike yours. This is our favorite list, by the way. Not necessarily <laughs> the top list, because realistically, we didn't play all of the probably AAA games I, that we'd like to I, play. I would, I would say I, I haven't played a lot of games this last year. Last year, technically last year, right? Yeah, I'm kind of sad about that, really. It's weird because a lot of the games I played last year are coming out this year. Mm -hmm. So that's also why my lists are usually like very weird when, when choosing games. And you're not going to see a lot of AAA games on these lists for me specifically because of the fact that a lot of the games I get are from smaller publishers, which yeah. is kind of nice to get the spotlight those guys <coughs> in. Yeah. But all right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Ah! Two, five. All right. I go will... first. Me first. Right, fine, 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 fine. Go ahead. Mine's behind the wall over here. And it is the first one is Lord of Halas. Ooh. Yeah, this is from Waking Realms, and they're they're pretty big on right now. Yeah, this is their... a big big popular game right now. Right? Yeah, this is I this one I was kind of iffy on because it did look like a, another similar for me it felt like a similar game that is uh, Blood Rage has a lot of similarities in that I read the rules for that I taught the game uh, I pretty much, I, I really like it it has a lot of there's area controls there's adventuring where you can go with your is hero. there drafting. I, I for, no, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think I did that. I forgot. I only played it uh, once, no, twice, twice this year. I mean, that's a pretty yeah. good amount of playthroughs for us in general. We can play two or, two or three times. Uh -huh. That's that's. It is. Excellent. It's a pretty. It's pretty heavy game as well. It takes about uh, maybe up to three hours to play, uh, at least for our group. So we in there. But I, I really like. I like the theming. It's this Greek mythology. This is even your there. game. I like it. Are you I gonna buy like it? it. What? Are you gonna buy it? You tell these people to buy it. Are you gonna buy it too? Well, then, oh, this is my friend's cop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I certainly will get it. <laughs> yeah. So in there, it has really cool miniatures. These huge miniatures are there, like, you know, like Titan kind of like size from the board you can see in there. Yeah, yeah. You can really? actually see on the back of the bo bo board here, it tells you the size of the miniature, right? So it's mm -hmm. uh, 121 millimeters. Yeah. Which is pretty, pretty big. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, Lord of Hellas, Lords of Hellas by Awakened Realms. Yeah. How many players is it? Four, uh, one, one to four? One to four, and I believe the expansion might carry another one. Excellent. Yeah. Good so, choice. Yeah. And how about you? Well, so my game, like I was previously stating before about expansions, is a base game with an expansion that I'm including. <laughs> so I haven't talked about this game a whole lot, and it's been a favorite of mine for a while as far as... Uh, uh, games I haven't heard uh, talk about too much, and, and it definitely deserves it, along with the expansion called The Sea. This game is called Cold Water Crown. I believe this came out in 2012, so quite a while ago. Two, sorry, 2016, 2012. came out 2016, so it's about two years off of this mm -hmm. list. But the Sea expansion came out last year, and it includes some cool stuff like sailboats and the additional ability to go out into the sea as opposed to just fishing in a lake. 
Um, I'll just go ahead and, go ahead and pull it out like this so you can see. This is the Seas Expansion. It actually comes with its own board along with own unique fish. And it fits in the box. Yeah? And it all fits in the box, yeah. yeah. E easily fits in the box, okay. which is very nice. Um, it includes additional tackle and whatnot. This game is about fishing. I'm a big fishing guy. I haven't gotten to go fishing a lot lately <laughs> due to the weather and due to the amount of work I have. But when I do get a chance to go fishing, um, it's, it's very relaxing, very nice. And this game does that for me as well. What's also nice about this game is, is it's kind of like a puzzle game. You actually pull uh, things out of a bag and you get to place them down in your, on your board and you're taking them off, trying to gather fish. It has a lot of interesting aspects to it. And I really, really like that about this game. It's not really competitive, but it's definitely competitive at the same time mm -hmm. in, in the fact that you're trying to score as many points as you possibly can. There's some choices that can affect your opponents in a negative light, but for the most part, you're just trying to do what you need to do. And if it hurts somebody, that's also awesome too. If you have nothing on your new turn to do, then you can kind of mess with people. But there's no take that feel to this game. It's just kind of doing your best to get the best fish you can, all at the same time as watching what everybody else is doing to decide what your next move is. Cold Water Crown the Seas, which is a nice little expansion as well, included in the game, which, like I said before, allows you to go into the sea, catching sharks and other big and cool things. I like that little extra aspect as well. It brings more uh, interesting light to the tournament. Does it improve the game upon itself? Not really. It's, it's still the same game, which is added added mechanics, extra extra stuff you can do, but still overall a great game. Cold Water Crown, The Seas from 2018. Yeah, cool. I mean, the other game that they have released this year, is, I believe, is Mars Open. Yes, that, yeah. a beautiful, beautiful game. I yeah. haven't actually had to play it yet, but you own it? I ha I don't own it. I wish you I, flick. You like trying. It's, it's like I, you're I, capturing I, stuff. I got right? the prototype. They told me to send it away. Like no, I really. It's so fun because it's it's a golf game that you. Did, it's a golfing game. Yeah, yeah, it's a, game, it's a golfing game. Let's but you see. flick a little piece of paper and you can make anything like any tables, chairs, did or whatever. Did you enjoy it? Oh, I love it. Yeah, but I uh, you know I don't have the game no. unfortunately. But I did. I did miss. I love. I, I loved previewing it when I had it. Yeah. I do remember seeing. It. I didn't know it was actually from Bellwether, but that's that's awesome. I'd mm -hmm. like to check it out too. Uh, all right, number four. Here we go. And one, three. All right then. Me again. Me again. Fine. Go ahead. No, actually, I don't let you have it. All right. Cool. 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 So um, this game here is uh, an interesting game that reminds me of a video game from my past. I guess I think the reason why it made the list, uh, apart from the fact that it's just a really good game, is that it is also a good game with a nostalgia feel to it. This is called Expansity by Breaking Games. Uh, designed by Alex Cutler and uh, this plays I think two to four players and you're simply just designing a city the game itself is fantastic it has a lot of great properties involved with it you're you start off just placing things down the board it gets bigger and bigger and bigger it has a bunch of great little um, miniature cities that you're building on and as you're building the city there's different uh, ways you're trying to do it and of course the ways you do it uh, are going to improve your score based on how a city should look our park's going to be next to uh, the police station? Maybe maybe not. Will a police station be next to a commercial zone? Probably, right? And you'll score points based on that. And uh, it comes with tons and tons of these things. They're going to be utilizing. Like, the end of the game, it's going to look like a complete city. Um, and it's going to be gorgeous. Uh, so... It's, it's just a lot of fun. I just really enjoyed the game. It has some cool little additional components. It's a nice gateway game to jump people into more int more intricate games like this one. But it's something I'll be keeping around for quite some time. It'll be in my big top games collection for a while. It'd probably make my top 100 games list just because of the amount of times I've played this game uh, and the availability of it for just teaching new designers. Overall, the game as itself is great. I think it was like fueled with some controversy or something like that, but that shouldn't be... I base the game on how great the game is itself, and this is a great game. It is a lot of fun, and I highly suggest people take a look at it. Have you played it yet? I got to play it with only two players. How was it? I like city building games. Yep. This one didn't hit, hit on me yet. Okay. Uh, I do want to play with more... I believe this is a game that I probably will need to play with more players in there. The bigger the game, the more the, the feel of the city gets, I think. Do you play mm -hmm. a lot of SimCity as a kid? I ha I played I have played all the SimCity so far. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. What so, was what was something you didn't what, what didn't catch your eye? I, I don't know, but it's just I guess it's back and forth that we had with my what the the pawn I was playing with in there. Uh it's just like he put a building down, he put another building down, we just have our own spot. I, I think there's not enough 
I guess, chaos. In that the... happens in the bigger player game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We I, play I, as I two do... players, and in two players, you're kind of building your own things, and yeah. then occasionally you mess with your opponents. Mm -hmm. But in general, you're kind of like separately building the yeah. city. It's best at three and this, four players. This one more. feels more like uh, another game I really like called Sunrise City that actually you build up. I haven't it's, played it. It's not as um, the building, you don't, it's not those little miniature buildings up there. It's, it's like really, really thick cardboard that you build up there, and you can, you know, there's parks and. Residential areas in there, yeah. But I Fair played. I, well, I, I mean, I played what? Uh, say Sunrise City. I played what's another one? Uh, Card City XL or right. something like that. I played. I haven't played any of those played games. A bunch so of them. Maybe that's why I, I'm missing yeah. it because I don't. I haven't played those ones before. Yeah. But there's expansions coming up for this too. We're gonna include a monster that destroys the city. <laughs> okay, I'm now. I'm I'm back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like two or three. They're increasing with this, adding more stuff. I think it definitely needs <laughs> more stuff too. And what it is is fine. It's 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 beautiful and everything. But I definitely do want to see more stuff come mm -hmm. out for it. Some games don't need an expansion, and this one I feel like it can actually use with a couple. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's very simple, right? Yeah. Which is a great gateway game. But to add more depth to it, I think it'd be great to have some expansions. So, cool. Anyways, Expand City by Breaking Games. Definitely check that if you're interested. All right. What's my next game? I don't know. What is it? What is my next game? Um, oh, wait, wait, it's right here. <laughs> it's like, I was a little confused because I think I stacked these a little differently. It is... Space Base by John DeClaire. Yes, this is a... This has been dubbed the Machi Coral Killer. And it is. Yes, it is, yeah. And they're coming with expansion, I believe, this year in there. But I just love it that you... You are always involved in this game, even when it's not your turn. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it's well, like, Machi Core, you're involved in the game. You, you, yeah, but turn the thing too. is, it's like it, the, oh, this thing activates and you get to do things. This thing is like it activates and you get to do stuff. Yeah. Really do stuff in there. But I do love this like different. There's, I think the the overall flow is much better. The more you have, it's better, less luck it, based too because you can yeah. make your own luck in this one. You have better interesting decisions in there. Uh, as into what you can buy, and then also when you're buying stuff, you have to use all your money in there. So you have to think about how should I generate that. So this, is, I think the engine building is much better developed yep. than what Machikoro is. But Machikoro is actually coming up with a legacy version this year as well. So it might change up things, but for... Machi Koro I think is good is a good gateway game for people to get involved mm -hmm. in something like this. Play Machi Koro first, maybe because it's very very simple, and then this is the the instant jump up. This is actually yeah. probably be a little more challenging. I've, I've taught this to people, and it wasn't didn't go over too badly, but it did, did take a little bit to mm -hmm. to gather because there's a lot of stuff and a lot of choosing to buy certain things, a lot of symbolization on the cards, and your entire board. It, it, I don't know if I'd say it looks overwhelming, but it can get overwhelming at times when you have. 12 spaces that all have three cards on them and and then you have three different toggles that you're moving around so it does have a lot going for it which is a positive and i think and a negative mm -hmm. as far as the audience that's going to be just getting in involved in these kind of games yeah so yeah. Uh, overall this would be an honorable mention for me specifically for this mm -hmm. list it's it's a great game and um i mean full disclosure yeah. i know john declare and i think he's I, a great I, guy and i know him personally so as well, just so. just in case that was a <coughs> bias but overall this is a great game yeah yeah, try it yourself and and then tell me what you think. This this thing is just for me. Just just kill it. This kills Machi Koro. I mean, I should probably get rid of Machi Koro very soon. I mean, for me, I and would agree would. as well. But I probably would keep Machi Koro around yeah. for younger people. Like for mm -hmm. I, I have young people come over and play. I would not have a young player play this game. Oh, okay. Like ten years old. It's just not. It's not going to work. I don't think. What does it say for player? Fourteen and up. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit more meat on it than yeah, Machi Koro is really really simple. Yeah. I did like Machi Koro as, as in this the base game in there, um, but you can you can really it can get crazy. No, you well the thing is you can oversee the, already all of the strategies already in that base game, and then I did not like the expansions at all. I think they just didn't flow as well because mm. it'll just be like you know here's a bunch of purple cards that are down there or a bunch of uh, other cards that you can't really Fair make enough. fun yeah no I'm yeah. To totally fine space space is a great game great choice mm -hmm. ah, ah number three yes here we go two no i cannot roll high enough. three okay i'm okay. gonna go i'm gonna go is it I I'm, I'm thinking about my order right now and i think yes okay i'm gonna yeah i'll do it here we go now this is the game. Symphony number nine. Number nine. I have. I will declare this the best music game so far, in the world of board gaming. Wow. Yes. That's a, that's a high, high list. Now, if we did a top five, would you have five on the list? Probably. <laughs> 
they're gonna, it's, it's funny because we got this one and then we got a bunch of rock band games. <laughs> <laughs> Which is about management. I've really. got a couple of music games that yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, it's funny because there's, it's, I don't know, music, it's going to be, either, it's all about management. It's kind of weird. And this one's also, well, this one's about stocks, I guess. And uh, about trying to see which composer might give you the Frank most money. Frank Lin yeah. and Hung Yang Shen. Mm -hmm. looks, it looks gorgeous. It's nice. It has nice quality. So that's all shiny. And this is from uh, nice Moir reference. Moir Moir Diaz game design in there oh wow and did this, it come yeah. with these little things too yes well i have to build them it's nice yeah and, and everything fits too which is yeah. nice too it, it, it's a little cramp in there but yeah it fits at least it's small enough well, it, it's, i mean it's yeah. good that it comes with a lot of components i wasn't sure what it was going to come with but it yeah. comes with quite a bit and it has a little board too I mean, front the, and the, back well the thing is i this is also my number three is that because it's it, it does really speak to me i'm a composer i'm a musician music is like the other part of my life so so, so semi, yeah. semi music bias there then <laughs> yeah so yeah and i and i think it's a great game it, it's it doesn't really do anything for like music sake but for the theming in the it does feel like you're you composing. are yeah you're you're i guess you're a patron to the composers you're trying to bet on their their music if they're going to go there and it has a really interesting mechanic of this blind bidding system that has like five different tiers part of it is you want you don't want because it, everyone's bidding in for the concert so yep. they're, they're giving the concert a budget and if you bet too low then the pay the the uh, the rich people don't want it yeah <laughs> and you bet too high the peasants revolt because you're putting too much money in this stupid concert but you have to find a way to kind of think of how much money, it's a balancing yeah, act. Yeah, in there. But the thing is, you have these scores that you want to, uh, well, get money from if they actually get played in the concert. Okay. In there, so you guys say, oh, these are the higher guys. They have a lot of money. But the thing is, I have to put a lot more money. I don't want to put too much money because I might not get. I might go overboard. Yeah, your return uh, might not be as in good there, an yeah. investment. In there, and there's other things. It's a very Euro kind of style. This is a game from Taiwan as well. No. Nope. Yeah, so I had the Taiwanese design in there, and I, I I love every aspect of it, and this is like probably going to be probably in my collection for a very long time, just because of theming, and I also do like the mechanics in there. Beautiful, good choice. Mm -hmm. What do I got? Well, this is a game that I was not sure I was uh, gonna like. I, I I when I looked at it first, I wasn't sure what it was gonna be about. It, it had some interesting phone applications attached to it or tablet applications and those are usually hit or miss in my opinion as far as board games go there's a couple of them that are pretty good some of them that are pretty bad um and another thing is i didn't actually get the game before the release to check out which i was promised and it broke my heart but i did end up getting it and uh once i started playing it i ended up playing every single different scenario for it it's just called Chronicles of Crime by Lucky Death Games. Mm -hmm. This game, Chronicles of Crime, is basically CSI or Law and Order, the board game, in which you play as detectives or investigators, and you are trying to determine um, what has occurred in the story. And you'll be able to use your app, for your phone application, to move around the board, asking people questions, going back and talking to forensic, talking to investigators, uh, talking to people like scientists that can help you along the way you'll open up new locations which operates with new characters characters can die in the game and you can lose the ability to talk to them players can rechange uh can move around the board at certain time <coughs> limits there's certain different aspects of the game that involve not only time but also how well you do at the end by guessing all the correct clues it'll have this like checklist of different things like who is this bad guy? Who is this? What was this evidence and whatnot? And if you get all of them right, you get a higher score. And the game just finishes regardless. But it plays like a movie. In fact, it plays like a very good movie. And uh, overall, very very fun. My only, my only my only critique, I should suppose, is you don't get the virtual reality glasses. You have to pick them up, which it does have a VR experience. We get to look around the room, which is pretty cool and works pretty well. Um, but you have to pick that separately. And also, there's about I think four or five scenarios. And after that, you have to also purchase additional ones. Which, uh, I don't know how I feel about microtransactions jumping into board games that, as far as apps That's quite micro. It's actually quite expensive. Well, like five bucks each. I mean, my, a microtransaction <laughs> is like a transaction where you pick up a new piece of the game, a small piece of the game for a monetary cost. 
I don't know how I feel about that, but overall this game is excellent. It's very, very fun. I really, really enjoyed myself, and I played every single one of them, and everybody I played this game with really, really enjoyed themselves, uh, and I've recommended this multiple, multiple times to people, so I am excited to see the new stuff coming out, and I probably, I will be buying the expansions, so, I mean, uh, I guess my, my, uh, my, my, my negative is not enough to stop me from picking up the, uh, extra stuff in the game because I really do <laughs> enjoy it. So there you go. Chronicles of Crime by Lucky Duck Games. Definitely, definitely check this one out. Uh, Man and Meeple approved. Has Edo on the back here. It's got Rado. Uh, I don't know who Tabletop Together is, but I'm sure they're great as well. A lot of people like it. That doesn't have me. But it should because I like this game. All right. Next. Number two. Two. I'm going to get a good number. This oh, time. I got one. I got one. Six. I'm playing music in the background right now. There's music going on. I'm going to edit this in. Yeah, make sure you remember that. <laughs> Grant, you're going to remember to edit this in so I get some music? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, I think I'm done. All right. I'm going to go first. That way I can go last on the next one. Uh, yeah, that's if you're going to go last. I'm going to win. I'm going to drink whatever's left of my tea here. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Have I prolonged this enough for you? Uh, this game is a worker placement game. Uh, there's a lot of worker placement games out there, I know, and I do like a lot of them. It has become a favorite of mine since I started getting into board games. <sighs> I didn't see this one coming. When I picked up the game, I was interested in the theme. I do like the theme of Cthulhu. And this one is called Evil High Priest by Peterson Games. I met these guys. <coughs> Lincoln, a uh, great guy, at Gen Kong, and he ended up letting me... Uh, try out Evil High Priest, and uh, I fell in love with this game. I really, really enjoy it. There is so much content in this game. You're constantly doing things. You're placing your meeples either on your own board for worker placement or on other boards. Boards will appear throughout the game that will increase the amount of spaces you can uh, place your meeples down. There's certain ones that you can actually incre you can increasingly place meeples down to get a, a, a effectively a higher bonus at the cost of time. You're also building a sanctum at the same time that is going to have raiders come in to try and steal your stuff that you've acquired throughout the game that you can either forcibly do on everybody, including yourself, because you've built enough defenses, or you can kind of wait out the coming storm. Uh, and there's multiple boards as well as bosses or like gods that you're basically worshipping, that also have different effects on the game, which changes just based on the gods. There's monsters you can fight in the game, which will defend your base as well. Uh, and there's the different characters as well in the game. There's a high cult cultist that you can utilize for your board. Um, there's just a lot. There's a lot of great stuff in this game. It, it, it looks so overwhelming at first, which doesn't bother me in a worker Which placement. is always like any like worker placement game. It just looks overwhelming. But once, but once the game starts flowing, I was... I was digging it. Sandy and Lincoln Peterson made this one here. Uh, it's got the rules here. You've got the monster board that also has investigators, which doesn't come with a base game. There's components that don't come with this. You got to pick up. You have to get the expansions because this game is great, and I haven't even played the expansion stuff. And I desperately want to try the investigators already. There's chambers that you're going to get to purchase. Everybody has their own player <coughs> board, which is going to include, of course, uh, their 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 layer. Um, as well as the priest only spaces. Uh, there's other basic space on the boards. There's, there's, here's the chambers right here where the monsters have to go across. This is how much strength you have. And as the monsters go across, they start stealing stuff in your chamber unless you can defend it. And it happens to everybody. So you can go, well, I know this is a big monster, but I have a lot of defenses and, and uh, Ferdinand has no defenses. I'm going to forcibly push that monster through our bases. So it eats all of Ferdinand's stuff, but doesn't eat any of my stuff. At the cost of us both losing yeah, defenses. Yeah, you would do that. It's beautiful. Um, there's player boards. There's tons of player boards. Uh, this is the ritual board, which doesn't actually unlock at the beginning of the game. It unlocks uh, after the first investigator raids. So then it pops over, and there's um, more spaces you can utilize. There's monster cards, but they all come with the same monster to start the game with. So with the expansion, they actually have different monsters, which is needed. Um, and then, of course, there's the two boards. There's Cthulhu to start with. There's just a lot. There's so Fight. much cool stuff. There's the Black Goat and Cthulhu, but there's also additional expansions that come with different uh, bosses. These are all spaces you can place your worker on. Sometimes only one space. You can only do it once in an entire game, and they have to move on. And sometimes these spaces open up new spaces that you can utilize the rest of the game. Uh, comes with a bunch of beautiful miniatures. Comes with a bunch of components. Uh, that is another. That's a town space. You'll be utilizing that for most of your worker placement. There's This game's got a lot. A lot of worker placement. If you like worker placement games, this is... Uh, 
This is one to check out. It's, it's, it's I ha I have not heard this game. Yeah, yeah, I, it's a it, it's it's by Peterson Games. They've made the call. They made the Cthulhu board games that are very very popular. But uh, anyway, Evil High Priest is on my list, and that is not going to go away anytime soon. My like I said, my only caveat is I really really wish that it came with the investigators, additional monsters. Those are only two things because they're literally missing on the boards. Uh, so I would pick up the expansion there, you guys, because that adds more than just fighting the same monster over and And the monsters don't matter. They're just defenses, but it's still nice to have different artwork. I don't know. Whatever. That's it. Evil High Priest. Excellent game. Yep. Uh, you gotta let me try it someday. <laughs> Whenever we have an hour and a half. Yeah, okay. Well, my next game is in your pile. In here somewhere? Yeah. Oh, and that's Chronicles of Crime. Oh, by number two. All right, I didn't know you didn't say anything when we were talking about it. So I, I wanted like, to keep it. It's it like a surprise. Yeah, surprise. Yeah, go bring it, bring it out. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Here you go. Yeah, I mean, I a lot of things you said. I don't have to explain the game right now, but a lot of things you said. I just like it. I think it's it's well polished in there. I like the like the narratives and stuff in there. Oh, one of the things that uh, I really liked is it's really easy to get into the game. I mean, you don't even need the tutorial in there. I mean, there's a tutorial scenario in it. Which does help. Does help. I yeah. mean, it helped me understand how to utilize the application. But you don't even need to read anything in the rule book about how the game goes. It's it's that intuitive and that easy just to get in. And it's so innovative. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, I mean, you mentioned the Google, uh, the goggles. I don't like the goggles. I get motion sickness. So oh, okay. I don't. I, the thing is, I don't. Like really, some people don't like three D movies either. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I can. I can stand three D movies, which is fine. Which is, but for the for this game, I, I don't really care. But I think even just using just your iPhone to actually doesn't really detract from the. Oh, it didn't actual, bother me at all. I never yeah. had the, the goggles. It was a lot of fun. And it's, what is great is like it's three. It's three sixty up and down. And you can yeah. look around, yeah, uh -huh. which is super cool. Yeah, because you, and everyone wants to try it though. Because you're, you're not the only person going to go look into the crime scene. Everyone's going to try it and trying to figure it out because you never know what you can discover in there. Yeah, uh, I think I played about three games of this so far. I think my favorite one's the one we actually got five stars in. <laughs> And I think that's the one. There's, a, there's twist endings too. Yeah. Which is super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that when the expansion of this comes out, I'm just gonna get it right away because there's one that looks like. So uh, how do you feel about the added like transactions on? Because you can go on the app and pick up the additional. They're fine if you really want. If you want them, I mean the the well, we got ours as a review copy, so it's not gonna affect us as much. Though. Well, I'm thinking about other players and whether I would specifically go out of my way. I mean, is there enough game in here to be there, worth there, the experience? There is plenty. I believe there's like at least six, seven scenarios. That, I can't remember that come, how many. Of them. There's, there's, that there come is in the enough. game already. I mean, realistically, you're buying an experience of this game, like an ex like an escape room, the game where you pick up one copy, it lasts for an hour and a half, and then you go mm -hmm. buy another small box. This is just a larger yeah. box with more. Of it. Uh, yeah, the thing is, unfortunately, that the game that once you once you play the scenario, that's it. That's it. You you can't play it. Any, well, you won't enjoy it as much as anymore. You could play it again time. if you want to, like, 100% it. There are those completionists out there. Yeah, but, you know, five bucks for in a scenario, that's cheaper than a movie. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I thought, too. It is cheaper than a movie. It is, it's longer than a movie. You'll probably get... There's the also, like, there. a di I mean, when you open this box, there's almost... There's not a lot in it. Um, there's it, it, a lot it's of a room, and There's just... a lot of room for additional stuff. And, in fact, in the bottom here... It has the space for glasses. There's these things. I don't even know what those are. There's mm -hmm. dice that are going to be included at some point or another, yeah. maybe. And then there's additional people and others. So there's planned expansion stuff for this already coming. Yeah, no, no, there's there's no, no. Well, the expansions already were there for the people who backed it. Oh, there were. Yeah. Okay. I mean, one's going to be one's going to be like Riven, um, um, Rivendale, which is like the the modern version of uh, Archie. So. Yep. And there's one I'm also excited about is the some sort of this noir one as well. I don't know where that's taking place. Either Chicago or LA, I can't remember. Or it could be somewhere else. I don't else. know. I never saw the, I, I saw the ones, I saw the transaction online. That's all I saw. Really. Yeah. But I, I would be interested in seeing the physical stuff too. Mm -hmm. Send us the physical stuff. We will review it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great. Uh, the, the app, I mean, when it, when it was first like previewing this, it would crash, and it was like very sad. About oh, it. really? Yeah, but it, it's, no it's, problems. It's, now? It's, it's much more. Sta it's a lot stable. I, I didn't have any problems with it. You do need good lighting, although, so you depends can just, on your phone, I yeah. guess, or whatever. I didn't have a problem with that. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, my number two is Chronicles of Crime. Good choice. Good choice. I agree. <laughs> 
All right, time to take you off at number one. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Luck be the lady tonight. Whenever you... Is that... I got a three. I got a three. Two. Four. Be my guess. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Dang it. Ah. All right, all right. Um... This is what I call a diamond in the rough. It's a game that you've probably not played, but you should, because it's very, very good. Um, all of these are kind of in my... They're, I guess the order is about right, as far as my most favorite games that have come out. And there's two reasons for this one. Uh, two main reasons. The gameplay, of course, is good. All the gameplay in all of these games that we've pu pumped out is really good. At least the ones I've played. Um, this one is also cool because... It's a new company that has made... This is, I think, their first game they've ever made. And it is gorgeous. Gorgeous looking. And they have given everything they said they would. And more. This is Vindication, which originally was called a different name. I actually got to review what it a long time the, ago. What was the original it, name? It was originally called Epoch the Awakening. Oh, yes. I, now I remember. And I played, the, I played the game itself. When I played it originally... This is so big. Um, I was very, very, very impressed with it. It was a lot of fun. It got, it got a good review from me, and for good reason. Uh, this is actually... I, I have this copy. I don't, I don't think as much as much inside it. I think it's actually the... Ooh, game trays. Oh, look the, at that. Yeah, there's, yeah? It, it comes with game trays. It's, it's really, it? really pretty. All the artwork is amazing. It comes with miniatures. Uh, we're actually going to be giving what, this copy away. Ah. So the winner... Uh, I'll, I'll uh, stop touching it. has me. metal. Uh, <coughs> it has metal... Uh, Piece of coins in it. Um, it's got everything. I mean, but the, anyway, let me explain the gameplay. So you are. This reminds me of Path of Exile. If you've ever played that video game, it's like a Diablo-style game in which you wake up on a beach and you just uh, you're in exile and you start going around and gathering resources and whatnot. Has the same feel of that as far as the theme goes in this game. And you're basically trying to uh, go around and visit different locations. You can improve your character as far as movement goes. You can improve. You can fight monsters in the game. There's just a whole bunch of stuff going on. The board uh, is really, really large. It, it plays up to, I think, five players? Yeah, two to five players. And um, it has a tableau management aspect to it. Not a lot of luck, a lot of strategy. Just a beautiful, really well done game. Uh, I, I did not expect anything like this when this game came out. Orange Nebula, uh, Mark, excellent, excellent job. Uh, you deserve all the praise that you've been getting. Uh, as far as gameplay goes and production value, you really threw in everything and the kitchen sink when it comes to Vindication. I'm, I'm happy to see what you come up with next, as well as uh, playing the game, actually. It'd be nice to play the finished copy, because I'm only going off of the uh, prototype, as well as looking at this and reading the rules. There's a lot more stuff in here, uh, as well as some stuff I don't have from the Kickstarter stuff. So you lucky Kickstarter backers out there have, have got it all. Uh, mm -hmm. Great job. Vindication. It's massive. Seems massive. I gotta try it out. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's. I expect this from a AAA publisher. When mm -hmm. I see something like this, I expect it. Yeah, to... I, I I seen previews of it. Other reviewers looking at it, so I'm quite jealous that a lot of people have it and I haven't played it yet. So yeah, it's a massive game. It's got a lot of replayability. I mean, you can look at my review to see everything. I, I can't. I'm not going to go into the entire details of it, but it's very very good. I really enjoyed it, and the artwork is, it's fantastic in my opinion. All right. It's my turn now. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so this is a game that I cannot get enough of. I played way back the prototype, the alpha, the the beta, right before they were launching, and I I helped them out and also made a tutorial for it as well. And it finally came out last year, and I'm very excited. Mm, Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Mm, close. King's Guild. <laughs> King's Guild. Yes. Yep, so this one just came out the fall of last year, and I mean, I can't stop playing it. I love the the, the, over, the flow of how everything is. The, it's uh, relatively elegant, and it's like... Tom Vassell yeah. called this game the Splendor Killer. Do you agree? It feels like Splendor, but I, you know, after playing it for lots of times now, I think it, it can be its own self. I, wow. I also disagree wow. with Tom. I do not think this is a Splendor Killer. Yeah, I think Splendor it, is a separate game enough to where this one's yeah. a lot more going on. I believe I believe the only thing that kind of is so similar to it is the gathering, the gathering resources. resources. And, and that's probably it. 
Uh, because in, well, instead of like in this is a this is like if you're playing Splendor and you really enjoy Splendor, mm -hmm. uh, and which is a great game in my opinion. It's but it's very quick and very simple like, to explain. This one here is for those big, deep, thick, you know, mm -hmm. people who want a big experience with the thin, slim, yeah. uh, Splendor feel to it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. This is a great this is, game. This is the gamer Splendor. Yes. I, w I would say, but it's not. I mean, the only as I said, the only similarity is just that uh, instead of. In, in Splendor, you get to choose the resources. You either pick two, um, is it two of the same and three different ones. Yes. That's just reverse in this game, and that's it. That's weird. You get to pick either three of the same or two. You have tableau management yeah. in this game. You've got your resources. You've got your quests. You've got your literally building on your board. Mm -hmm. You've got cards that you're collecting. We just played this game actually a couple days ago. Uh -huh. um, a lot of fun. The only, the only sad thing for me, I suppose, was when you collect the resources you want, and then it come, comes around the table to you again, and the thing that you want is now gone. Due to the cards in their people's hands, you don't know about them. They go, oh, I play this, get the resources. And... That's why you have to gather some relics in there as quick as possible. That would really help you out. There's I a mean, lot of things no, in the game. Knowing, knowing about a lot of stuff in the game, well, you have like relics, for example, there's three types of relics. Yep. Knowing which ones to go after will definitely help you. Yellow will go for gold, blue goes for resources, red for points. If you want, yeah, they have different cards. The different replayability. Types of there's like infinite. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's massive. They have specialists that never don't don't pair in every game. You Matthew did a great job with making this game so large and expansive. Mm -hmm. It has tons of options, and there's tons of different ways to win. You can go about winning with quests. You can go about winning with building uh, your. I mean, really, want to do a little bit of everything, I think, mm -hmm. but. You have you can you can go more for one side or another side and and, and do well in this game. Yeah. The the game doesn't have any modules. It's just the setup is just randomized differently in there. But you can see what the especially the buildings like because you can get extra points for these particular things you can do if you get those quests for it, for example, in there, which is great. I mean, it's it's I as I said. How do you like about is, sharing like, quests? What sharing people? quests? It's fine. Um, that's why uh, it's because there's quests. Think... When you gather resources, you're going to then use those resources to put to buy quest items. Some quests have one, and some have two. When you mm -hmm. buy one, uh, when you buy one with two, then you place one of your tokens on there. Somebody else can buy the other one. In which case, you would split the resources. You would split the treasures, basically. Uh, the player who I believe uh, buys the last one is going to gain the relics. First. The relics, they get and the, first and the choice, other first player choice. is able to gain the card itself. Yeah. And the card itself can be of value as well. The end of the game. Anyway, uh, yeah, I agree with you completely. This is a great. We actually played with Mas Matthew. I believe his last name is Austin. Mm -hmm. I mean, great guy by the way. Amazing. Yeah. I did. Okay. Uh, um, and he's a really great guy. And we got to play Werewolf Legacy with I, him and a bunch of other players last I week. Mean, yeah, and um, also seeing this through Kickstarter, like one of the things that they did upgrade was the resources, and I just love the resources how they are a different shape the, instead the, of just the production cubes. quality is amazing. Yeah. In fact, we got to play a game uh, just from your box game just recently. Mm -hmm. uh, on my live stream last week. You know, you know what that one is? You just saw it here. Yeah, Chaosmos. Chaosmos. Uh, yeah, that's their first game. Yes. Both of the games they've made so far are, are uh, hits, in my opinion. I, I like. I enjoy them both. Mm -hmm. This one is is. I think is, that a lot of people will be reaching out for this one. This one, yeah. This one yeah. will be big for quite a while, I think. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I mean, I mean, I, these guys are yes, they're local, but you know, I really, I just cannot get enough of this game. People are people yeah. are digging this game right now. Yeah. I would agree with you. This would get an honorable mention for me as well. I would. Uh, I would drop that in. This I haven't done my review, but I'm just gonna say you're gonna hear it first. This is a super stacker, a five out of five. Oh wow! Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't stop thinking about it. I can't I just want to take it out and play, play it again? Yeah, play, just keep playing it. Yeah. All right. Well, now any honorable mentions? I, I actually don't have it right now because I didn't research. You didn't I'm sorry. Research no. anything, that's okay. I wanted to give out a shout out for Five Minute Dungeon. That's a game that came out a while ago, but they made a, <coughs> a, a, a Kickstarter expansion with curses foiled again. If you want a more in depth version of Five Minute Dungeon with more stuff going on, more difficulty, check out the Five Minute Dungeon expansion. It comes with quite a bit of extra stuff. And uh, also, of course, you get the base game if you've never played it before. It's a dexterous game. The King's Guild was another. Uh, mention and of course space space was another mention of mine uh, three really cool little games that almost were on the list but i didn't play king's guild enough i think mm -hmm. and a uh, space space it, it i don't know i guess your I personal know. experience yes i mean it was great i just yeah. i just i don't know it, it, i think, oh, I, think well, I think cold water crown probably snuck in there just a little bit <laughs> but right. uh, overall i mean i mean I, I i actually like your list a lot too i mean uh, yeah, Connor goes to crime in there. Expansive, expansive, which I just have to play again. 
I do want to play with more people. Interested uh, in the high priest? High priest? High priest? I like worker placement. Interested in vindication? I think everyone's interested in vindication. Yeah. Giveaway coming out of my site very, very soon. Mm-hmm. My, I would say mine's a bit more niche. I played, I played uh, what was it, three of, three of your games, obviously. Yeah. I own, and I own three of them. Uh, Symphony number no. 9 is is a Ferdinand niche specific game. Yeah, it's a very niche game. And then yeah. Lord of, Lords of Hellas is... I, I, would you classify that as a AAA game? I have no idea. It's, I, it's almost like... I would it's say not a game I would generally it's their get. First, it's, I say it's their first game, and okay. I think for the popularity, I think it might be a little, is now a bit more niche. Okay. But now, well, now that... I, I haven't played it, so I don't know. But now that they are doing really well in other things now, like their, their new Kickstarter and stuff, right. I so think. So basically yeah. what we need to do is Lords of Hellas and uh, Evil High Priest of Vindication Day. Yeah, those, yeah, those are right. the ones. Well, thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer and... The Carbert Stacker. Top 5 video for my favorite games, most interesting games of 2018. Would you say best games? Best games that we probably played? Yeah. I mean, we wish we could have more time to play everything. That our everything, memories yeah. can think of. I mean, if we, if we left you out and we loved you and gave you a great review, then... Uh, Sorry. Yeah. But that's, it's, that's it's, I, I would say it's been a great year. It, it has been a great year for games. There's been a lot coming out. Uh, oversaturation? You know, I don't care. I don't care about their saturation. If the game's good, it'll be sold. The, it'll, the thing, it'll the thing is, it. the thing is for me is like, there's not enough people in the board game. There could be a lot more. Make people. more. Get yeah. more people. I mean, there, people talk about saturation about the video game industry too. Like, ah, who cares? There's gonna be games for everyone, yeah. and there's there's a lot more people still coming for gaming. Yeah. So I don't care. I think I just I'm, as long as we keep share show the video out. Get more people interested in gaming. Show them these interesting games that uh, they probably have not played before. Uh, all your non-gamer friends. And uh, also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. It does help, as well as taking a look at the Cardboard Stacker. Yeah, and you can find me at www.cardboardstacker.com, or you can go to my YouTube, uh, the Cardboard Stacker. Uh, the Cardboard Stacker in YouTube. This guy does a bunch of wonderful Kickstarter tutorials, as well as some just basic tutorials. He does some specific reviews of games he really enjoys, previews as well. And uh, I do the same without tutorials. That's too much work, and I'm far too lazy. I like, I just, I love teaching him, so I have to do tutorials. Yeah, and they look great. Mm-hmm. Like, mine would look terrible, like little stick figures <laughs> moving around the board. Do, 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 do. Uh, hey, but you get, you get, look how many previews you do. I do a yeah. lot. One a day. <laughs> Keeps the doctor away. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next, next time. time.